radiation. So, the x rays when they are they were falling on the grating, they exhibited the diffraction effect. Similarly, when these electrons were allowed to fall on the metal surface, so what is the grating here? We know that in crystals or in metals, the atoms are arranged in the regular pattern. So, if this atomic spacing served the purpose as the grating in the case of X-ray diffraction. So, when the electrons are falling on this metal surface, the spacing between the atoms served the purpose of uh, the slit, it, 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 uh, it acted like a slit through which these waves associated with the electrons, they underwent diffraction and they gave the maxima and minima. So, they actually used the uh, equation given by Bragg's condition for maxima, diffraction maxima, they used that formula and they calculated the wavelength using that formula also and then they also calculated the wavelength given by the, the formula given by de Broglie, theoretical formula. So, they just compared the values of wavelength obtained by these two formulae and they found that there was a good agreement between these two values. So, they established the dual character of electron. Now, we will just see the experimental setup used by Davison and Gerber. It consisted of filament F So, this filament is made up of tungsten coated with barium oxide. So, it is heated by using this low tension battery. This is the rheostat used to change the voltage applied. Now, using this battery, the filament is heated that is tungsten filament is heated. So, due to that thermionic emission, we have studied different types of emission. Electrons can be emitted in different way. Here, due to heating effect of current thermionic emission, electrons were emitted. Now, these electrons we have to get in, in a fine beam. So, it, these electrons were allowed to pass through a hollow cylinder C with the hole and this cylinder C is given negative potential. So, that this will repel the electron further to go into this anode. Anode was also a cylinder, hollow cylinder, but this anode is given a positive potential. So, that the electrons will be attracted towards this. So, this combination of this cathode C and the anode A, it served the purpose of electron gun. So, electron gun, using the electron gun, Davison Germer obtained very fine pencil of electrons. So, these electrons were made to fall on a nickel crystal. Which was cut along the diagonal like this. So, this is the direction of incident electron and these electrons when they fall on this metal surface as I mentioned they underwent a diffraction and the scattered electrons were detected. The scattered electrons were detected using a detector. This detector D actually consisted of some a sensitive galvanometer. So, that the electrons which are scattered here coming out will constitute a current and the galvanometer will show the deflection. So, from that they will come to know that the electrons were uh, scattered or deflected in this direction. So, this scattering angle phi is called scattering angle, angle between the incident electrons and the scattered electrons after falling on the nickel crystal. Now, this angle theta is called as glancing angle which is, uh, which is angle between the incident electron and the atomic the atomic layer. So, this th theta plus phi plus this theta will be 180 degree. If you see from this diagram you can understand these three angles will be added together to get, get one, 180 degree. So, from this we calculated the value of phi. 
what is phi here it is a scattering angle that is angle between incident electron and the scattered electron so from this we will uh, see that it is 180 or 2 theta plus phi is 180 phi is theta is 180 minus phi upon 2 or you can write half so 2 theta will become 180 minus 5 so theta will be half into 180 minus 5 so this theta is the glancing angle it is called or it is the angle between the incident photon sorry incident electron and the electrons coming from the electron gun so incident electron and the atomic layer now this theta he calculated to be 65 degree so how the 65 degree came actually this experiment was repeated for different values of accelerating potential the potential difference applied across the cathode and the anode so he repeated the experiment gradually increase the voltage up to 68 volts from 44 volts to 68 volts and he observed that the intensity of scattered electron showed a sharp peak for scattering angle phi. So, he plotted the graph between the scattering angle phi and intensity of scattered electrons for different accelerating potential. So, this graph was drawn for different accelerating potential and this particular graph what I have drawn corresponds to accelerating potential 54 volts. So, how he accounted for this sudden or sharp peak under this condition that is when accelerating potential applied across this electrodes was 54 volts and this scattering angle was 50 degree there was a sudden peak that means on, at this condition the condition for first maxima for diffraction effect was satisfied therefore at that particular angle of diffraction and that particular value of accelerating potential the diffraction effect was the condition for maxima was satisfied therefore the intensity of scattered electron showed a sudden maxima there a sudden rise there so using these things now if you substitute phi to be 50 degree here you will get 65 degree of glancing angle then using Bragg's condition for first order maximum of diffraction 2d sin theta equal to n lambda is the general formula first order maximum so n will become 1 so we get like this so from this d what is d here as I mentioned earlier it is the atomic spacing for nickel crystal it is 0.91 angstrom unit into sin 65 if you substitute this is some 1.65 angstrom unit then using D, this is the de Broglie sorry this is Bragg's condition for maxima. So, this they obtain from experimental value because we are substituting the spacing atomic spacing of the crystal used in the experiment and this theta also we are getting from the experimental graph. So, this is the experimental uh, value of wavelength obtained. So, substituting de Broglie formula that is h upon m that uh, elect, uh, accelerating value that we have to use. Since it is electron only we can use the simple formula that is 12.27 only we do not have to use the general formula. So, just now we have derived ok. So, 12.27 upon under root capital V angstrom unit we derived. So, in that case capital V we substitute 54 volts and if you calculate this value it will be 1.66 angstrom unit. So, this is the theoretically predicted value by de Broglie and this is the experimental value observed by the Davison and Germer experiment. So, if you compare these two angstrom unit you know it is 10 power minus 10 and only the second decimal place is varying that means these two values are in good agreement. So, this established experimentally that electron even though it is a material particle it is associated with the wave because 
the diffraction effect studied by Davison experiment, Davison Germer experimental setup is the wave phenomenon. So, this clearly establishes the dual nature of matter that is electron particularly in this case. Now, what is the importance of this de Broglie's hypothesis? So, in this chapter we have studied in detail about photoelectric effect and what is the importance of this? The photoelectric effect as I mentioned earlier that it can be explained based on uh, quantum theory that is the radiation is considered to be made up of packets of energy. So, these packets of energy are actually uh, similar to the particles. So, the particle nature is also coming into picture here and we are now we have come to the conclusion that the radiation as well as matter both are having the dual nature sometimes they behave like particles sometimes they behave like uh, waves. Now, this uh, photoelectric effect particularly can be explained only based on the quantum theory which led so many discoveries led to the so many discoveries using which we can easily solve the problems faced by the classical mechanics. Moreover, this quantum theory or quantum mechanics actually uh, helped scientists to develop electron microscope which has very high resolution compared to other optical microscope which were which are now used for various uh, research processes. So, this study of photoelectric effect is very very important in physics research field. Thank you. Thank you.